We just got a major update from ChatGPT and all of the stuff that's going on there, which is really exciting. It seems like the AI space is heating up again after a little bit of a plateau in interesting news. Ever since we got Claude 2 recently, things have really been moving. And so today I'm going to give you all of the details about this new update for ChatGPT and why it matters. And then stick around to the end because I'll also give you my thoughts on Claude and whether or not this is a good or a bad thing for Claude as well. And let's get into it. In ChatGPT, you can access this new update by going down here to these three little dots by your email address and hitting settings and beta. Then you come here to beta features and you have access to all of these different beta features. The plugins and the code interpreter uh, have been out for a little while. I haven't done a video on code interpreter because it's not as relevant for authors, but there are some pretty amazing things you can do with code interpreter. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. And of course I've done videos on the plugins before, uh, but custom instructions is the one you want to enable for this particular update. So you wanna make sure that this is green here. And if that's the case, just click out and now you should have access to this option here which says custom instructions. Now as far as I'm aware this one is actually available for both GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. I am uncertain if this is available on the free version of ChatGPT. Uh, so if you only use the free version and you're not subscribed to ChatGPT Plus please let me know if you're able to access this function. Uh, it's my understanding that the beta features are usually just for the subscribers, but since I can access it with both language models, 3.5 and 4, I just thought I would check on that. But so far, here's what you do. You come up to custom instructions, and then you have two fields here that are that allow 100 or 1,500 characters in each field. Um, which is a fair amount of words. It could be larger, um, but basically what you do is you put some information in these two fields and then ChatGPT will remember that information until you decide to change it. So all of the chats that you open up, as long as you have this here that's enabled, that says enabled for new chats, all of those chats will remember the information that you put in here. Now this is a big deal because this is something that people have been asking for for forever. Very often we will start a prompt by telling it like the role it's gonna be in and telling it the style we want it to write in. And then every once in a while you have to keep reminding the AI that that's the style you want because it forgets after a little bit of time. If you put that style information in here, it will not forget that information. So that is that alone is a pretty big game changer. So let's talk about what you would actually put in here. It says, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? Now for fiction writers and just writers in general, I would use this space to outline what it is that I am writing and what my goals are for that uh, project and all of that and maybe any background information that the AI needs to know. So if you're writing a book, you can put information about your characters, the genre you're writing, maybe a quick summary of what happened in the last chapter, you know, whatever works you can put in here as long as it fits within that 1500 characters, which unfortunately you can burn through that pretty quickly and run out of space really fast if you're trying to put your entire, you know, novel Bible in there so it knows all of your characters and everything like that. So you are going to have to get selective and only provide it with the information that it needs to know for that particular chapter that you're writing at a time. Uh, and if you're doing nonfiction, this can be a useful field to enter in any facts or anything that you want the AI to know. But again, you are limited only to 1500 characters, which is just, I think, roughly, it's less than 500 words, uh, probably more like three to 400 words. And then uh, this, this one is equally important here. It says, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? And this is where I would put the style information. And so if all we did would, was say, in the style of HP Lovecraft, I use that one because it 
it is obviously when it's writing from his perspective and then hit save and we say tell me about great places to visit in Paris Ah, the accursed city of Paris, shrouded in the sinister veil of time, where ancient cobblestones whisper eldritch secrets and shadows dance upon the walls like phantoms of forgotten lore. Clearly, it's uh, hearkening to H.P. Lovecraft's style here, right? Uh, Very dark and sinister. And this was actually using the GPT 3.5 model. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, So it does work with both models. And so if we go back here, we go to custom instructions and let's actually fill out something for real here. So I have a couple of prompts that I've prepared uh, with information about the story. This is for my Fairy Queen series. And so this is the kind of stuff I would put in this first space. And already I've used up over a thousand, almost all of my 1500 characters here. Uh, It is still a fair amount of space that you can put in here, but it, it, it is a little limited. And I say, I'm an author writing an Arthurian young adult fantasy book. Here's information about the book. I've got character one, character two. This is an Arthurian story. It takes place in roughly 500 CE. It takes place in Britain during the Saxon invasion, yada, yada, yada. Just information about the book generally, right? And then what I want to put here in the how would you like chat GPT to respond, I've got some information here about the style. So third person limited POV, formal descriptive vocabulary, varied sentence structure, vivid imagery, yada, 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 tone, urgent and stressful. A lot of characters are worried that they are about to lose the battle of earth and so on. And so now I can save this, open up a new chat. I'll use GPT-4 for this. And then um, I can just say, write me the... uh, a scene from the fairy queen book now i haven't given it any prompts on what it should be writing specifically Uh, so if we were doing this properly i would be doing that but you can already tell like it's got my first character in here it's got information about the saxon invasion it's clearly understanding uh, what i put into those fields and so I could say, let's start over, write uh, the first 500 words of a scene, let's say, of the opening chapter where George and Una are about to be married and the wedding is officiated by the fairy queen Gloriana herself. So now I've given a little bit more instruction on what to write. It can actually get to work on that. And as with anything in the AI space, you want to be specific and you want to give it guidance and a framework to follow. Otherwise, it's just going to be too generic and not something that you can actually use. From the topmost turrets of the Grand Citadel, the rays of dawn gently kiss the sprawling land, heralding the arrival of much, a much-anticipated day. The air vibrated with a unique energy every moment, carrying the, pot- the potent echo of change. It was a day of joining, of blending two souls into one, a day sanctified by the very presence of Gloriana, the fairy queen herself. So, it's clearly taken the style that I've given it and gone to town with it. And you can really do whatever you want with these custom instructions. If you write nonfiction, you can give it styles of what the nonfiction should be like. Um, one of the prompts that I use, I've got here, I could just look it up. And um, I have like all of this detailed style information uh, that I use for creating articles for the web that includes like best practices for online writing, including short paragraphs, bulleted numbered lists, and bold italicized text, etc. And then I'm just leaving this blank for now. And now if I open up a new chat window here, I can go here and say, write me an article about uh, King Arthur. And it starts to take in that style information that I gave it about uh, doing online articles. So lots of 
uh, subheadings and some bulleted lists and things like that. Obviously, I would not publish an article uh, that was just this. I'd want to give it a lot more information. But um, really, really good for helping it can keep a consistent style throughout the entire chat. This is really exciting. Another quick update that I just thought I'd mention. I wasn't going to make a whole video about this, but then I thought uh, I would just add it on to this video once I learned about this new update. Is in If you go to GPT-4, it now says GPT-4 currently has a cap of 50 messages every 30 hours. Or every three hours, sorry. Uh, this used to be 25 messages every three hours. So that is now doubled. And I know a lot of my audience, a lot of you guys are going to be really happy about this because a lot of us have been running into this threshold over and over and over again. And it tells us, well, now you have to wait. And that's, you know, that's just annoying. And so now that threshold is much higher. You'll be able to get a lot more written using ChatGPT before you run out of room. So that's another really cool update that seems to have happened around the same time. And interestingly, this comes hot on the heels of Claude coming out with Claude 2 and their own chat interface, which I've got right here, which you can take a look at and some of my other videos that I've done. Um, but I think this is interesting that this has happened because I'm pretty sure that we're starting to see the benefits of competition. A lot of things like this happen when there is competition. It's one of the reasons why competition is such a good thing for us, the end consumer, is because it allows you know, innovations like this. I do believe that in GPT-4 raising its cap to 50 messages per three hours and releasing this custom instruction thing right now has to do with Claude releasing their 100K Claude 2 um, model. Now, a lot of you might be saying, oh man, does this make ChatGPT even better than Claude 2? And ChatGPT definitely has its own advantages over Claude depending on what you want to do with it. Claude, on the other hand, has different advantages that make it ideal in other circumstances. There really isn't one that is definitively better than the other. But one of the things that really made Claude stand out is the fact that it has a 100K token limit, which means you can write about 75,000 words before it forgets things. Which means that even though it's nice to have this custom instructions box here in ChatGPT to make sure it doesn't forget certain th key things that you don't want it to forget, the fact that in Claude it won't forget for thousands and thousands of words is uh, basically makes the need for that feature irrelevant in Claude. Now, Claude can sort of get off the rails and you need to bring it back and sometimes remind it of what it needs to be doing or how it needs to be doing it anyway, even though it can remember far back. It just gets sidetracked. So it's not perfect, but you basically don't need to worry about it remembering what it has written in the past or what you have covered or entered in the past because it has that 100K token limit. Um, and recently... Actually, if you look at some of the news that's been going around lately, Microsoft actually published a paper uh, all about the fact that they came up with this new model that allows the AI to remember 1 billion tokens, which is basically, for all intents and purposes, unlimited. That's basically half a lifetime of everything you've ever read, all in one memory. And that's coming from Microsoft. Now that wasn't news, they're not incorporating it into any way that we can access yet, but it was just a, a technical paper that came out, but it shows you where the field is going. A lot of authors are really excited about the idea of maybe training their own models on their own work and being able to do that. And then that model will just always remember your style and how to, how to write like you and it might know all of your books and be able to remember them and all of that stuff. And that's fine. I think, you know, not too long ago, I thought, yeah, that's that's something that somebody needs to figure out is the way to make me basically refine my own model that maybe it's built on the back of GPT-4 or Claude, but then I can have my own model that's just, a, you know, me, my, all my books. Uh, but now I think once Microsoft finds a way to incorporate 
this 1 billion token parameters into its models. And, and again, you know, Microsoft has a huge stake and investment in chat in open AI in chat GPT. And so if chat GPT were to gain that ability to have 1 billion tokens as a memory limit, that basically makes, um, all need to train your own data set irrelevant. Uh, you don't. You would not at that point need to be able to train your own models because you can just take all of your books, everything you've ever written, and then everything else that has ever been written that you also want to put in there. Anything you can imagine, you just put it into that model and it'll remember that stuff. And then you can just keep using that over and over and over again. And it'll remember your whole series. It'll remember everything. And that's really exciting to me. And I think that there's a possibility we'll have that kind of capability by the end of the year would be my prediction or within a year at the most. Uh, Because, yeah. So even though this is really cool that we have this custom instructions thing here, I actually think that features like this are going to be irrelevant within... uh, within a few months uh, at at a minimum and a year at most is my prediction. Uh, So go ahead, start making use of this. It's really helpful right now with the way these models are currently where they forget after a little time. But man, the future is exciting and a little scary. And I just can't see, can't wait to see where it goes. And I will hopefully continue to make videos for a long time about this and helping you figure out how it works for authors and how you can apply it in your own author business. So I will see you then.